Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request from Jonathan. Thank you so much for that. If anyone's ever interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, commentaries, reviews, re-reviews, video game let's tries or playthroughs, whatever the case may be, PayPal is usually the best bet or join my Patreon. Uh, both links are down below in the info box. So, Jack from 1996. I know there's a lot of people that do like the film. Either they grew up with the film and they enjoy it. If you enjoy it, that's fine. Teach their own. This is not for me. <laughs> it's not. I never have liked this film. I watch it again. I still do not like this film. No, I do not like the director Francis Ford Coppola. For a variety of reasons. I never considered him that great of a director. I know it's a very controversial opinion. But when I think of great directors, I think of Martin Scorsese, I think of Quentin Tarantino, I think of Brian De Palma, I think of Alfred Hitchcock, I think of John Carpenter. I think a lot of other directors other than Francis Ford Coppola. That's just me. Because I much prefer a lot of those guys' movies. Now, Fred Ford Coppola never really did this type of film too much. It shows. Because it doesn't know what tone it wants to pick. It wants to be funny, but then it wants to be rather depressing. But then the jokes want to be very juvenile with fart jokes. And like I said, I never could get into this film. And I looked at the cast. I mean, you got Robin Williams. I love Robin Williams. I was so sad when Robin passed away. You got Diane Lane, who plays his mom. You got Fran Drescher, who I don't mind. You got Jennifer Lopez as a teacher of his. You do have Bill Cosby, which that's a whole other thing. Which, some of his dialogue inadvertently sounds a bit weird because of now we know who Bill Cosby really is as a guy. So the setup of Jack is he'll be 10 years old, but he looks 40 years old. So that's the premise we're going with. I know there's some people that go through something like this. I forget what the terminology is, you know, similar to this stuff. It's one of those things, though, that by the end, I... I guess I would see what Francis Ford Coppola was going with where you may not be around for a long time but even if you're around for a short time make it count which is why Bill Cosby goes to that whole thing about a shooting star but it just falls flat on his face at least to me because I never found the film that funny the film just felt more depressing than anything. Oh. Sorry, I'm pausing to figure out how best to put it. But let's go on with the, the actual... What happens in the movie. And this is what I'm talking about the humor is that, okay, the parents are at a party. They don't think the baby's going to be born for a while. But she just contraptions and Diane Lane's going, it's too early, it's too early. And it's a costume party, so one is the Tin Man, one is a pack of cigarettes. So you have this trying to be zaniness where a guy's trying to get this metal detector. Oh, it's your whole suit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Which, as stupid as it sounds, are there metal detectors in hospitals? I never really thought of it that way, that there'd be a metal detector in a hospital. I guess, uh, you know, I, thankfully I've not been in too many hospitals, and the ones I have, I decided I didn't have to go through the metal detective, metal detector phase. Why would you need a metal detector in a hospital? I'm trying to think. If if your hospital has it, then okay, I'm just 
just didn't know about it. But I'm just trying to say why? Because doctors have a lot of implements that are metal that they don't have to showcase anyway, and it's a hospital, so you know you're hoping now a lot of people have guns and weapons to go by. Um, maybe the city they're in is just a bad city. This is metal detectors everywhere. The bathrooms. You gotta take a dump. Sorry, you gotta go through the metal detector first. <laughs> I don't know. So, she gives birth. I like the song by Brian Adams. There's a road long and winding. I do like that song quite a bit. I wish it was in a better movie. I will admit, I wish this song was in a better movie. Because I thought the song gave me much more of an emotional impact than the movie itself. And then it cuts to, boom, it's ten years later, but he looks like Robert Williams. It felt like there's a lot of stuff we could have seen in that ten years. And the difficulties about how he's this age, but he looks like this. So, I mean, he looks like he's 12, or he looks like he's 15, but then he's acting like this. I felt there's a lot more of either character development, or character work, or even comedy you get from that. But instead, boom, we cut right to when he's 10, looking like he's 40. And his tutor is Bill Cosby. Now, like I said, in retrospect... Which I know is not the movie's fault, but when you see Bill Cosby tickling him and rubbing Robin Williams, and later on when they're in the treehouse and he's saying lines like, Some of my parts are rotten. I've been known to chase whole families away. Now, in the context, is about the kids wanting him to fart in a cup. But did you hear Bill Cosby say these lines out loud? Some of my parts are rotten. I've been known to chase whole families away. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> if they can run, just <laughs> you might have drugged them first and they can't run. That's one of those things where, like I said, when you hear it, it's like, it doesn't work nowadays. I'm sorry, I have no respect for Bill Cosby. I don't. And I used to like Bill Cosby. I liked his stand-up special, Bill Cosby himself. I can't watch it anymore. I'm sorry, the guy is a creep. No respect for him. Now, I know one of the main complaints, which is understandable, but I did what they're going with in the movie, where he's supposed to be 10 years old, but he acts like... You look at how the other 10 year olds act, and even they act a lot more mature and a lot more than Robin does. Where, okay, even though he's 10, he's needing to sleep in his parents' beds, and he's acting like he's in kindergarten more so than a 10 year old. But some would argue, well, it's because he's been coddled, it's because his parents have kept him away from. The outside world and I didn't I think that's why that should have been more prevalent at the beginning where we see instances of him being coddled of him as looking like a 10 looking like he's 15 looking like he's 20 wanting to go out but you see the mom and dad coddling him and this and that and maybe Bill Cosby trying to talk to the parents that you know, you're affecting his growth, and that's why eventually he's going to go to school, because the way he's a, you're affecting him, he's not acting like a, how a 10-year-old would. I have that be part of the story, so that when he does go into the school system, the audience is wondering, well, he's supposed to be 10? He, he, I didn't, he, why is he acting like he's 5, though? Or he's acting like he's just, Bye. oh, there's a reason for it. Some people would say, well, isn't that kind of leading you by the hand? But I think that would have worked in character development. It would have helped make the audience, a good chunk of the audience at least, understand better of the predicaments. 
as well as getting to know Jack a bit more as a person. That's just me, though. Because, again, because of that, you just say it's inferred. You have to pretty much reach to your own conclusions on that. So when he's in school, and he's saying yes, because the teacher's asking him a question, yes, speak a bit louder, and then Raman goes, yes! You think, okay, none of the other kids who are in his grade would act that way at all. So, is people just assume, is Robin going over the top? Is Robin going, trying to be, be overzealous in comedy? But then there's a reason for it. And the rest of his time, this just series of little events that happen. And that's, it feels less like a movie and more like just a collection of events. Which some would say, well, that is a movie, but... I didn't see a strong through line of him becoming friends with these other kids. It was more, okay, they want nothing to do with him because they think he's a freak. Then, okay, he's good at basketball. Yeah, these two girls who are judgmental twerps. You're tall, you're hairy, you, your arms, you're bigger. Like, who the hell are you two? Dunk you two in the toilet, shut up. And then they start using them. They use them to get dirty magazines. They use them to pretend to be a principal to talk to one of their moms, which is Fran Drescher. Then they bring him to this tree house. But okay, they're more using him to get to their own benefit, but I didn't really buy these kids actually liking Robin's character. And it seemed like maybe there'd be, if you want to have this emotional tone, that maybe the realization of these kids, like they're, if you really built it up that he is their friend, and then they're confused as to what's going on with him, and they think, okay, he's just a big, you know, trying to be like a big kid. Maybe some of them think, okay, there's just something wrong with his head, but he's being nice about it, and he's being friendly about it. And maybe having to teach these kids the mortality of this, that he's not going to be born for this world. And, you know, within 10 years, more than likely he'll be gone. And people say, well, that would affect the tone. Less so than at one point he tries to hit on the teacher, Jennifer Lopez, and she says, no, I can't. And then he has a heart attack. But they say it's not a heart attack. They say it's a... What did they say it was? Arterial, arterial sclerosis. Yeah, arterial sclerosis. That's not a change in tone. <laughs> At least this would work in the other kids and as actual characters. Instead, like, the big scene of the movie is them in a treehouse farting in a can to sniff it. I did not like that when they were doing that in Biodome. Where Stephen Baldwin and Pauly Shore are farting and they're sniffing and trying to guess where the fart came. Like, whatever the games are playing with it. But here it's farting in a can and sniff the can and, oh, this is how it sounds like reverberating on the can and I'm... I'm not a fart joke guy. I never thought it was funny. And again, I just think it's weird to have this potentially serious stuff with a guy noting his mortality by the end of it. But then have a big old scene where they're farting and then they get Bill Cosby up to the treehouse and they make this gat for him to eat. And then they want him to fart in a can, but he won't. Or dialogue when they keep asking Robin Williams, do you get a boner, an erector? Which, I'm sorry, I don't know. Maybe that was typical back in the day for kids to, but thankfully it wasn't for me. There was no kids asked to me, do you got a boner? But I mean, you say, yeah, there are kids that you'll pick on other kids. 
to be fair, that that is the case there. But this is more like they were curious, not that they were making fun of. The reason I'm pausing is that's what, sadly that's like the big scene in the movie is the treehouse scene. Because after, like I said, he there's a dance coming up. He asks Fran Dre about Jeffrey Lopez. She says no, understandably so. Again, he's got the arterial sclerosis thing. Then he decides to go out and to meet up with Fran Drescher. And also there's this bar. Michael McKeon is in there. And pretty much in the middle of it, he's drinking alcohol for the first time, which I'm sitting there doing okay. So technically it's a 10-year-old drinking alcohol. But we're dealing with it because it's a 40-year-old body. And no one else knows that he's 10. Then he gets into a fight. Gets punched. And then after that, he's so depressed he doesn't want to leave and go outside. I just thought it was weird that was the... That was the incident. Where... He decides, I don't want to go outside because what does it matter? He just doesn't care anymore. I, I just don't see how those things connect. Meaning, if he had... Okay, for example. If he had seen... Someone he knew die. A neighbor. Maybe he was friends with a neighbor. An elderly neighbor. And they died. And sees how old she is and then looks at him and how he even looks older than his parents. He makes that connection. <clears throat> but how old was she? Like he's making that connection where he's figuring out his own mortality and then this depressive nature. Or maybe the kids find out about this and then they try to have this conversation with Jack, but Jack wants to just have fun and play. But the kids are, in, you know, curious about this, but not trying to be mean. But then they want to apologize, but then Jack is depressed. Like, I mean, the, the fact that it's just, okay, he has a bar fight and now he's, nothing matters. I just thought it was weird, like, that's the moment where he thinks about his mortality not seeing someone who had died or seeing someone else it just felt weird and then the whole finale is like can, can Jack come out to play can Jack come out to play Bill Crosby says well don't need to teach you anymore mentions this whole thing about a shooting star I'm sitting there going yeah you see the shooting star all you want but I definitely did Jack's issue with he wants to live a long life. He's not able to. But then it felt like for a while he still was not gun ho about it. And then just randomly he decides to change his mind. Again, if it's if it's right after the Bill Cosby bit with him saying that stuff and he thinks about it and then makes the conclusion that would seem to make more sense. Or maybe there was some other event that happened. Like his mom or his dad talking to him. Because like the dad is a non-entity in this. The dad might as well not exist. I mean, it says something that the one scene with the... The, the two scenes I remember with the dad is him wearing a Tin Man suit at the beginning. Trying to get through a metal detector. That I mean, maybe it wasn't a hospital, but I thought it was the hospital he was in. And the second thing being... He does a photo shoot with a bunch of sexy looking women on giant carrots. I guess it's a photo shoot for carrots. I'm like, damn. 
hell of a <laughs> sexy women riding big carrots. Nothing sexual about that. <laughs> what kind of ad is this? Penthouse? Hey, we're with a tariff factory. We'd like to rent space in your magazine. Well, probably more, that'd be more like Playboy. Penthouse would be showing the whole thing and everything wide open. <laughs> so probably more Playboy. But uh, that was a weird thing. Here's a bunch of women, their titties almost out, riding some big carrots. <laughs> Ride my big carrot then. Medium sized carrot, I'll put it that way. But that he doesn't care anymore, and then it's like a while after the Bill Cosby speech, then all of a sudden he does care. What makes him all suddenly start to care? Don't know. They don't go into it. <laughs> Even if it's just like him noticing, I don't know, it could be something as sentimental or over sentimental as seeing a butterfly come out of, you know, a, a caterpillar turned to a butterfly or something. It, it, yeah, I know it's very cheesy over sentimental, but like give me something to mark that move from one to the other. And like I said, I don't know what parts I was supposed to laugh at in this movie. I just view Robin being childlike, but <sighs> eh. I didn't think it was as funny as some people made it out to be compared to other Robin films, whether it be Jumanji. Which I thought that was much done funnier than that. Because he was a kid and then he became an adult. But because he, all he knew was the jungle, we had a little bit of that kid mentality. But still, you know, had to add the adult as well. I thought it was done much better than Jumanji. I know it's not the exact same thing. I'm just saying I liked his performance better than that. Or just other comedies. You know, the Birdcage, Mrs. Doubtfire, Good Morning Vietnam, Aladdin. There's a lot of other movies I preferred over this. And as I said, Francis Ford Coppola... Apocalypse Now, I thought was okay. Yes, I just thought it was okay. I much prefer Hamburger Hill, Platoon, Full Metal Jacket. I don't think it's a bad movie. Don't get me wrong, but it's just... I prefer Casualties of War, Hamburger Hill, We Were Soldiers. I mentioned Platoon. I mentioned Full Metal Jacket. I just prefer all those films above Apocalypse Now. Godfather films, I've never been a fan of. I prefer Goodfellas, Casino... Starface, uh, I prefer those movies. Bram Stoker's Dracula, I like some of the visuals. But I have issues with other parts of the movie. So again, Fred Ford Coppola was never a favorite of mine. And I don't think he does much here. In fact, I think even if you were a fan of the guy, you'd watch film. If you're a fan of Fred Ford Coppola, when you just watch the film, would you even know it was his movie? Visually wise, story wise, dialogue wise, however makes a Coppola film a Coppola film, would you even engage that with this movie? If so, where? I'd be curious about that. And then it ends with he does a little goofy thing in the class where the desk falls apart. Hell, I got more laughs out of that with Billy Madison. As silly and goofy as it is, I just find that film more funny and more entertaining and consistently funny and more tonally consistent. Then it's seven years later. He's given a graduation speech. He's much older. Because that means if it's four times, it's probably... Well, getting close to 70... He's getting close to 70 years old and he's graduating. They go off and then, for all I know, two days later he died or two weeks later he died. I mean, they don't tell you. I guess that's up to you to figure out. But, okay, he graduated. 
I'd be like, you know what? If I only had this many years to live, I don't want to go to school. <laughs> like, if I knew I only had, you know, 10 years to live, I'll find a way to get out of work and school and just have fun as much as possible. That's what I would do. Because I kind of get what his sentiment of why do I need to know history? Why do I need to know about Napoleon? Well, they don't talk about, why do I need to know about that? You know, if, I, if I'm not alive in, you know, 10 years or so. That's actually an understandable. And they bring up like one little bit and Bill Crosby says one or two things, but then they all drop the thing. And that's the thing, okay, if it was to go that route, there's a lot more dramatic roads to cross to delve into the story of mortality. If you don't want to go that deep, then maybe pick a different plot, a different story. If you want a comedy with Robin being a big kid... Then have a ripoff of Big or vice versa or some other thing. Then have it be where a kid wishes he was... He was an adult. And then he turns into this and then... It'd be similar to those movies. I, I said, I didn't think it was that funny... I thought it was pretty depressed, kind of depressing at the end. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, she's kind of just there as a nice teacher. She appears a couple times. The dad is non-existent. Diane Lane does what she can. Uh, I liked her as an actress. Fran Drescher. I honestly made me want to rewatch The Nanny because I haven't seen that since I was a kid. It makes me want to look at some of the old episodes of season one just to looked at that show again because like I said I haven't seen that in decades Bill Cosby's a creep I didn't want to see him and again his dialogue out of context makes it creepier and like, and to repeat myself the biggest joke is them farting in a can and sniffing it in the same movie where at the end he's giving this big speech as if he's giving a bid speech in Patch Adams or some of these other movies. Again, the, the Robin Williams I enjoy more is Mrs. Doubtfire, Jumanji, Good Morning Vietnam, even What Dreams May Come. I rather watch Father's Day than this movie. I said it. Is that a perfect movie? But I had more fun with Father's Day with him and Billy Crystal over this film. I just didn't have fun with the movie. Like I say, if you like the film, that's fine. Teach the Throne is just not my cup of tea. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.